Shalom, my friends. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. We have been given a mandate of God. God would have asked us to join with Him in sharing the message of hope. You see, the hope that God has given to us is in Christ Jesus. He offers peace eternally. And we, here at Impact to Impact Ministries, are helping other people to escape. We trust God that as you will join in our broadcast, that you will be blessed week after week, or whether it is that you meet us on the mission fields or simply on the streets, preaching this word of God, as we continue to declare hope reborn, Jesus Christ, indeed, hope to all nations. welcome you to a broadcast impact to impact trust that you will be blessed in jesus name we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message wonderful indeed is our lord this afternoon we thank god for the blessed privilege that we have that we can again just continue to share um, words of encouragement to you all as we continue in the topic of um, deliverance from this age, the world that we're in. Um, today I want to just take us a little bit further as we would discuss deliverance from the moral darkness of our world. And um, then we're going to be finally talking about from our age or our world that is passing that we're going to be delivered. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 talks about this deliverance from the moral darkness of our world it begins our discussion this afternoon the word of god indeed is blessed and father we ask that you just illuminate this time let your word be a time of refreshing to our souls in jesus name this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the gentiles walk in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart second corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 says but even if our gospel is vile it is vile to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Indeed, those enslaved to sin are in darkness of understanding. Every person that is enslaved to sin is in darkness when it comes to to understanding which explains actually the deludeness and the greediness that is demonstrated and expressed here Ephesians 4 19 he says who being past feeling having given themselves over to the lewdness to work all on cleanness with greediness that combination of lewdness immorality greediness right but jesus actually reveals moral truth and how we are to be renewed in the true righteousness and holiness that he provides and uh, the answer to this 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 matter this the only true deliverance the moral truth as have been revealed by christ is found in verse 20 the following verse 
he says but you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning former conduct put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss and be renewed in your spirit or in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness Jesus Christ gives us the answer to the moral problems that we face the lewdness the greediness as have been expressed these are moral a morally dark world when we think about our world today and even it happened since in Christ days it occurred in Paul days in all days and no exception our world is morally in darkness our world is in morally in darkness when men could call light dark and call darkness light we know indeed for a fact that things are indeed gone crazy completely off the order in which God would have it and even the order of which good sense good sense and nature itself would outline and would highlight and would give to us man's heart have turned away because of greed and uh, lewdness we live in a day and a time whereby men are taking natural uses and uh, throwing away the natural use of things for unnatural and th there are those who who don't want to be able to be corrected in this what I call insanity because to be engaged in something that is wrong that you're calling right because you in your mind you're convicted and convinced that what you're doing is so that does not make that thing right and uh, now there are those who are declaring and portraying and making all sorts of statement as if the, the truth as have been presented by Christ have been mad or corrupt and have been set up to hinder but the truth does not hinder my friend the truth only but sets one free and Jesus Christ made this provision for us he says concerning your former conduct you need to put it off put it off when it comes to the way how you used to conduct yourself you must put it off in another reference in John chapter 8 verse 12 in Jesus is the one that shines bright light in moral and the chaos the moral madness that plagues a world Jesus Christ shines light right he's the one that gives the light the illumination that is necessary in John 8 verse 12 and in John 12 verse 46 let me read 8 verse 12 first then Jesus spoke to them and said again saying I am the light of the world he who believes in me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life that's what Jesus Christ said I am the light of the world the world needs light but the only one that can give light revelation a revelation that brings into fulfillment the will of God the freedom of man the sanctity of man and the, the good of life only comes by 
Jesus Christ. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. And the darkness as have been declared by Christ is all the moral decay that have been evident in the world. In John 12, 46, he says, I have come as light into the world that whosoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Why are you still in a place of darkness today, my friend? Why are you still in a present position, in that present position, with that mindset, with that attitude that is, is completely contrary to all of nature, to all of God, to all of truth, and yet still you, you, you choose to stand in that place of darkness. You know, Jesus Christ really provided the way out for you. He provided the way out for all of us, for me and for you. One only need to believe and to receive him and you will be delivered from the moral darkness of a world. And as we look at our world, more and more we are seeing how dark it is. How dark it is. There are so much narratives, I can't even keep up with what is happening across the stage, the face of planet Earth. Mankind's, mankind's heart is becoming darker and darker, even as the man portrays and declares himself to be increasing in knowledge, yet still we'll see, we're seeing with our very eyes that this knowledge that men are acquiring to themselves is only knowledge for their further demise. So Christ has provided deliverance for us from the moral darkness. Now, not only so, but Christ has also provided for us deliverance from the world that is passing away. Not only is the world have been dark and will continue to increase in darkness, but please note that the world is passing away. This present age with its loss, with its greed, with all of its immorality is passing away. There is coming a day when all will be ended. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 17, it reads, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is what John, 1 John 2, 17 says, The world is passing away, and the lust of it, everything as in Solomon in his conclusion in the book of Ecclesiastes, the wisest man on planet earth, he would have concluded when he looked at life, he had all the resources in life that he could have looked at life in a very comprehensive way. He had all the riches that he could have taught about, that he could have possessed, the rich, filthy rich man, he had all the wisdom. He had all the resources that he could have attained and acquired to do what he pleased. And Solomon said in his report that whatever his eyes set out before him, he gave it. Whatever his heart desired, he gave it. He gave it wine. He gave it woman. He gave it knowledge. He gave it adventure. He gave it experiments of gods. He gave it poverty just to see what it was like. And his final conclusion, he said, let's hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his command because this is the whole duty of man. And as Solomon would have said that, it's only because he too recognized that even though he had wealth and riches and knowledge and wisdom and all of that, those components could not keep him from decaying, from losing 
life itself. And as he saw life deteriorating, he considered what is man? What is life? What is this whole journey about? And he said, our business really is about fearing God because this moral, this immoral world, this age and the world that we are in, it will pass away. The word of God tells us so. The day is coming when this world and its works will be burned. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, the word of God reads, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. It will be burned up, right? Every single thing on planet Earth, God have said it. In 2 Peter 3 and 10, it have been clearly highlighted there that the world and the works that are in it, it means all of the houses, all of the cars, all of the technology, everything that man would have put on earth, it's going to be burned up. Even if we live out our lives, they are as vapor. Whatever it is that you will do, even if you get to live to three score and ten, even if you get to live to a hundred, hundred and twenty, your life is still like vapor. And it means that one day it will vanish. It will be ended. Your life here will come to a close in James chapter 4 verse 14. He says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Christ indeed have provided for us the deliverance that is necessary from the evil world which is to come in the form of of death and finally destruction isaiah 57 verse 1 says the righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart merciful men have taken away while one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil he shall enter into peace they shall rest in their beds each one walk in his uprightness the righteous the righteous will be taken away god is going to bring deliverance for every person that i've trusted in him it will be eventually it will come eventually at the return of christ when christ returns the word of god says that we're going to be taken away Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 1 says, They shall rest in their beds, each one, each one walking in his uprighteousness. He shall enter into peace. There is a promise of peace, a promise of rest, a promise of eternal, a eternal joy and satisfaction in Christ. But you need to trust him. So this will eventually come in Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15, it says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet him or to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord in Jesus 
we have the promise of deliverance from every evil work. So we're going to be taken out, but we have the promise of deliverance from every evil work in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. The word of God says, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Deliverance was his plan from the very beginning. That was God's plan. God had a plan. And the plan involved deliverance. Today you can receive that deliverance from sin, the, the power of sin, the temptation of sin, this world that is immoral and the age that is about to end, the world that is about to end. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will since before the heavens were made God had a plan of deliverance and that plan of deliverance was executed in the person in the power in the love of Jesus Christ it was his love that offered his son for our sins it's because of this love that Christ indeed came in first John chapter 4 and verse 9, the word of God says, In this the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of our sin. The payment came by the blood of Jesus Christ. The purchase came by the power, the power and the power that is demonstrated in that blood of Jesus Christ. The cleansing came by the, the power of that resurrected Christ and that life. Life, the hope, the peace, all comes by him. How shall we respond to such deliverance? Shall we not glorify God by accepting his graceful deliverance? Should we not join in in rejoicing because he had done great and marvelous things? He had delivered us from this evil age. He makes it possible through his blood son of jesus christ we do we can only enjoy this by obedience so we do participate accept walk in this deliverance only by one means one means only you must obey what about you today are you ready to receive the deliverance that God had made available for you to set you free even though we live in this in this morally confused and spiritually dark world in Jesus we find deliverance from the guilt of sin in Jesus we find deliverance from the power of sin in Jesus we find deliverance from the temptation of sin in Jesus, we find deliverance from the moral darkness of this world. And in Jesus Christ, we find deliverance from the world that is passing. This deliverance grants us life. 
and peace. Today we want to encourage you. I want to invite you to give your heart over to Christ. Trust him today. Let him deliver you. Do not remain in your ignorance. Don't remain in that dark place. But it's time that you understand that this, the evil age that we're in, we are not consumed. It will not conquer us as long as we are connected to Christ. Would you give your heart to him today? Even as we pray, I want to invite you to completely surrender to him all that you have and allow him to grant you the victory over your circumstances. Would you pray with me? Oh God, I thank you for every person that is bowing their heads. Those whose heart are open and saying, yes, Lord, your word declared even as we open up to you and we invite you, you will come in and sup with us. So we say, yes, Lord, fill them up, sup with them, bring them out of that dark place into your marvelous light. And even as we go, we ask your blessings. We ask your favor. We ask your kindness. We ask your peace, both now and forever. Amen. We want to thank you for joining our broadcast today. We want to remind you to check us out, Impact to Impact Ministry. Check out our Facebook page. Check, out our, our, check us out on our YouTube page. Or visit our live services on Sunday morning, 9 a.m., TIN 137 right here on this station and if you're on the internet you can also search for it, TIN 137 TIN 137 you're going to watch it online or you can join us on one of our medium we want to thank you for just being a part of this ministry we want to ask you to continue to support Impact to Impact ministry we want to thank God for bringing us thus far in this period of COVID-19 to a place of safety we pray that God will continue to keep your hearts and mind. Until next time, Bishop Ola said, we do love you. Shalom. Impact to impart. We're sending no message coming straight from the heart. Impact to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message.